What I've got here is a crease fly. It's a fly that a lot of you will be familiar with. It's a, a surface fly that I really like for a number of reasons. It's got a very narrow profile. It's very easy to cast. Peter Morse is going to show us how to tie one shortly. They can be tied in different sizes, depending on what species of fish you're chasing. And also, uh, you can fish them quite differently. You can give them long, hard bloops, or you can actually do a double-handed strip and strip them quite quickly. And depending on how you tie them, and how big that surface is in the front there, where it pops, um, it can make quite a difference too, as to the, the style of bloop and pop you want on the surface. This fly is a crease fly on a must-have 34007 hook that has been sort of the benchmark for saltwater fly hooks for many, many years. And the crease fly is a, a surface fly with a fairly slim profile. Very, very effective fly on pelagic fish. And because of its slim profile, it's pretty easy to cast. You can throw it a long way relatively easily even in a wind. So I'm going to lay a full body of thread along the hook shank. I want to build up a large body along the hook shank to give a large surface area for the actual body to adhere to. So I tie in the bucktail full length along the shank all the way up to the hook eye. This becomes part of that large surface area starting from the front, working all the way back along the shank, nice and even, like so. There's my good surface area there. And you'll see how that becomes significant a little later. There's a tail, a couple of wraps under the tail to help prevent it from fouling. The cock it there, a little bit of flash. Flies fished on the flats in clear shallow water should have minimal flash but it's always better to have too much flash in the beginning than not enough because you can always trim it off when you're out fishing. Get that even. Down either side, there we are. At that stage, I'll just whip finish it and remove the thread. I don't need the thread anymore. So I'm going to make the body of this crease fly out of sheet foam. This is two thin sheets of foam that I've glued together with a contact adhesive. Uh, you can use any colours. Uh, red one side, white the other is a good colour. I've glued them together just to make it a little bit thicker, make the fly a little more buoyant. And uh, yeah, colour combination is up to you, but I just like plain white. So I'm going to use this piece of cardboard to cut a template. So I want it slightly longer than the bindings there. Put a mark there. It's a really easy way of doing it. And this template will serve you for many flies. So there we are, there's the length, got the length right. Straighten up the front. The reason it's called a crease fly is you fold this over in a crease, like so. You fold the foam over in a crease, but you also fold the cardboard over in a crease. Set it up there. Now I want the front of it to be sloping, so... And just trim it to shape, the shape that you want the body in the end. You've got to leave enough foam for it to be buoyant. So that's the sort of thing I'm, I end up looking for, that sort of, that sort of body. There's my template. And I put that on the foam. What I'm actually going to do is cut a cut a strip of foam, the width of the template. You know, I'll cut half a dozen bodies out of this strip and make a series of these flies. So I've cut it to the width width of the body. Now I'll just trim around it. So just follow the template. There's the body, Alakazam. Now I tend to, on what will be the inside of the fold, I tend to taper that inside edge there with the scissors so that when I fold it I get the slight cup face. Now I get a run of super glue gel. This is great stuff. This is 
in my view, the only stuff you, you really want to use for this fly. It's just a non-runny super glue. Okay, I'm going to turn this, lay this on its side, run a bead of gel along those threads. The beauty of this gel, it just sits in place. Straighten this up again. And just glue that into place. It'll set very quickly. Now what I'll do is, when I'm tying these for myself, I'll do a production run. And I'll do six to this stage here. Just going to take a break for a moment, let that glue set. I'm going to lay a bead of gel down the other side here, all the way along the shank, just same as the other side. Then I'm going to fold that over like so, just getting it, getting it even. I'll turn that around so you can see it, getting it nice and even. There it is. There. Just hold that for sort of 30 seconds, just to make sure it doesn't pop off. Then what I'll do is. Stick on one of these bulldog clips, very useful things in the fly tying world. And that will hold that beautifully. Now, what I'll usually do is get a bunch of them, put them aside, let them dry like that. And there's your basic fly, there's a bunch of blanks. See as I've as I cut that that front edge to a taper, you can see I end up with a nice cup face on it here. It'll make a good bloop. So it's a, a skinny profile, but quite noisy blooper. Uh, you can make them with a very flat front profile, and now they won't make anywhere near the same amount of sound. So again, you can you can have these in a variety of different cuts and shapes and sizes. I can push that down and open that cup face up, like so. I poke a piece of foam in there to produce a round face popper. I also get a red texture color and, and do the front in red. That way, uh, the reason we have a red front on poppers is so that we know it's pointing straight at us before we bloop it. It's not sitting to the side. You get a far more effective bloop when you've got that red face pointing straight at you. You can see it and that's when you twitch it. So this is a fly you can use on a wide range of pelagic species. Um, one of my favorite forms of fishing is, is casting these to long-tailed tuna. Long-tails absolutely scoff them. They, they just eat them and, and the, the take is spectacular. Uh, queenfish love them, trevally GTs, and a lot of different species caught on them, but mostly those pelagic fish. 